Miss Kelly, are you ready to go? I am ready. Go for it. Here we go. Hello, library. My name is John Abrams. I'm a magician, been a magician for 25 years, and I'm also a magic teacher. I teach kids like you magic. Now, a lot of you have been doing um, online learning, and some of you have actually been going to a real school, but I know all of you know exactly what this is, right? It's a, it's a little pencil holder, and inside it has, um, usually you put your pencils and your pens and your erasers in it. Well, you know what? Today, in the WOW workshop, I'm not gonna do them all the magic. You guys are gonna help me do the magic. So here's what I want you to do. First, wave your magic fingers like this. Wave your magic fingers like this. And when I count to three, I'm gonna count one, two, three. You're gonna say the magic words. The magic words are WOW. Here we go. Magic fingers, magic fingers. Here we go. One, two, three. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, welcome to the WOW Workshop. W-O-W -W stands for what others want. What others want. And that's what we're going to discover during this show and this workshop. What others want when they're watching a magic show. And in fact, um, WOW Upside Down is... Mom, that's right. <laughs> well, welcome once again to the WOW Workshop. I have a couple things to show you first. Like I said, I am a magic teacher. The beginning of my magic classes, I always show one of these. Raise your hand if you see an old man. Perfect. I see one. Okay. Now, it's funny because when I look at it, all I see is a dog chewing on a bone. Raise your hand if you see a dog chewing on a bone. <laughs> Look at this. this is what's called an optical illusion. After the show today, what I want you to do is you can go to YouTube and you can type in optical illusion and you can see all sorts of things like this. It's so cool. Look at this. Check this out. Dog chewing on a bone. Beep. Old man. <laughs> all right. Every time before class, I also have what is called a magic doodle. Now, I'm going to show you a picture in just a second. And remember, there are no wrong answers. I want you to yell at the screen what you think this might be. Here it comes. Are you ready? And go. Go ahead, yell at the screen. Okay, okay. I heard somebody say a, a pizza looks like a pizza. All right. Someone, what? Oh, yeah, it looks like a cheese. Someone said it looks like a cheese, a cracker. Boy, they're coming in fast now. Here, here, here's what I think. I think it looks like a pyramid from the top, a pyramid with pigeon poop. <laughs> a pyramid with pigeon poop. All right. Remember, there are no wrong answers. That's designed to open up your mind. So you're ready to do all sorts of crazy magic. In fact, I'm going to show you five different magic tricks. Three of them, I'm going to show you actually how to do them. With each of these magic tricks, they are COVID-free. You don't have to touch anybody. You can do them for your friends, for your relatives, and you don't have to have any volunteers. But with every trick I'm going to show you, there are three different keys. The first key, it's a tough one, and I want you to remember this one. It's make it fun. Because if I'm having fun, you guys are gonna have fun. If you guys are having fun, I'm having fun. If I'm having fun, everybody's gonna have fun. So key number one is have fun. What's key number one? Great job, you guys. Key number two is always be ready. I'm gonna show you a few magic tricks and we have to always be ready when we're doing magic because a lot of times people ask, can you do a magic trick for us? And so we need to always be ready. So key number two is always be ready. What's key number two? Great job, great job. Key number three is think of others. Now, we have to think of others in a couple of different ways. First, we have to think of where others are standing. For example, if someone's standing behind me, 
Can I hide something back here if I'm doing magic? Yes or no? No, no, not at all. Because they'd see me and they'd bust me because I was, I was hiding something there. We, uh, what if they were standing over there? If they were standing right there watching me and I was trying to hide something there, they might see that too. So I have to think of where others are standing when we're doing the magic. Also, the second way we have to think of others is how they're feeling. For example, sometimes I'll go up to a group and do magic that'll be so amazing and so bizarre that somebody will get angry because I fooled them. But we don't get angry here. We're excited. Most of the time when I go to a group, they're excited and having fun with the magic. Are you guys ready to have some fun with some magic? All right. All right, so key number three is think of others. What's key number three? Great job, you guys. Give yourself a round of applause and a bat on the back. Way to go. All right. <clears throat> this first illusion. Are you guys ready for some magic? Okay, good, good, good. All right, this first illusion was taught to me by a lady named Professor Buckets. She had this crazy, crazy hair, and she had this, this white smock, looked like a, like a scientist she'd always wear, and she always looked in telescopes. And you guys know what a telescope is, right? You look at the moon and the stars. Well, she said, not only do I have a regular telescope, I have a magic telescope that can see through things. And here it is, the magic telescope. Well, it kind of looks like a, a toilet paper roll. In fact, um, on the Facebook group that you guys saw this, there was a list of, um, of items that you can get from around the house. One of them is a toilet paper roll. So if you have your toilet paper roll, pick up your toilet paper roll right now, because this will be so much more fun if you have it on you. Also, you're gonna need, for in a little bit later in the workshop, you're gonna need a dollar bill and also a quarter, right? Dollar bill and a quarter. And also, if you happen to have it, you will also need a deck of cards. Now, this is kind of optional. I'm gonna show you a trick with a deck of cards a little later. You can do it with me if you like. All right, take your toilet paper holder. One of the things I forgot to tell you is I forgot to tell you to activate the magic telescope. So here's what to do to activate it. We practice at the beginning of this show by moving your magic fingers to activate it. What you have to do is you have to move your magic fingers and um, um, say the magic words. The magic words are activate when I count to three. Ready? One, two, three. Activate. It is now activated. Now here's what we're going to do. Put, put your toilet paper, put your um, uh, magic telescope down. Here's what you're going to do. I want you to picture in the distance, far away, in the, maybe, maybe on a back wall or something, there's a picture. Or for me, there's a, let's see, what's there? There's a picture and there's, believe it or not, there's a giant plug in the middle of my wall. I don't know why it is. All right. So look at that. Focus on it. Look at it and keep both eyes open. The key to this is keeping both eyes open. Both eyes open and here. Wait, this is to remind you to keep both eyes open. Look at me. Look at me for a second. Look, look at that. Okay. That has nothing to do with the trick. I just like doing it. All right. Picture something on the back wall. Stare at it. And grown-ups, by the way, this works a lot better if you happen to have a toilet paper roll. So what you do, keep both eyes open. That's the key. Take your magic telescope. Put it up to one eye. Keep both eyes open. And now here it is. What you're going to do is you're going to take your hand. Do not put your hand in front of the telescope. Do not put your hand in front of your eye. What you're going to do is put your hand right on the side of the telescope, just like this. Watch this. Here we go. Both eyes open. Both eyes open. Look in your telescope. Palm towards your hand. Put it right next to the telescope. You should be able to see whatever you're looking at right through your hand. <laughs> Great job. Who did it? Who did it? Raise your hand. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Way to go. All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one more time. For you guys that didn't get it yet, all right, take your magic telescope. In fact, this time, what you can do is you're going to stare at me. Stare Instead of staring far in the distance, stare right at me in the computer. Stare right at me. Okay, don't, uh, don't do that. All right, stare at me. Both eyes open. Both eyes open. Take your magic telescope. Put it up to your eyeball. 
Take your hand, face your palm toward your face, put it about halfway down the telescope. You should be able to see my face right through the magic telescope, right through your hand. <laughs> awesome job. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Yes. And a pat on the back. And a pat on the back. Ah! <laughs> Way to go. All right. So I was, um, uh, I was looking through my magic telescope and I was looking at the moon and the stars and then suddenly from outer space came a giant meteor right up and it landed in my backyard. Well, I dug through the rubble and I found something very strange, something even bizarre. I found this. What looks like a children's block. But as I dug through the rubble some more, I realized this is not a human children's block. It's an alien children's block. And it helps aliens learn how to read, alien children. So here's what we're gonna do. I dug through the rubble again, I found two words, two words. The words girt, and I'm not even gonna tell you a second word. Right, the word girt means to stop. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use the alien word and see if it works. Ready? Girt. Now, it doesn't seem very magical, but watch very carefully. Now, as I dug through the rubble, I found that the word for yo is, the word for go is yo. So watch this, watch this. Yo, Kurt. Yo. Gert. Yogurt, 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 yogurt. <laughs> All this talk of yogurt's making me hungry. <laughs> you guys want to know the secret to this? Well, I can't reveal the secret here. I reveal this secret in my magic classes. In fact, this is the first, uh, first prop that you get in my Blue Course Magic class. It's so, so fun. This is called the UFO block. Give yourselves, once again, a huge round of applause. Way to go, yes! All right, um, one of the guys that took my magic class is a guy by the name of Bob Ninja. And he came up to me and he said, my name is Bob Ninja. I'm going to do card magic. And I was like, ah, I've seen every, every uh, magic trick there is to do with cards. He said, no. He said, all I need is a deck of cards and my super ninja powers. So he reached over and he got a deck of cards. And he said, now all I need are my super ninja powers. And he put on his super ninja powers. And he said, watch carefully. To the deck of cards. And he opened them up and he said, I think what I'll do is magic with this seven and eight of clubs and spades. And he took the deck of cards and he took the seven and eight of clubs and spades and he put them in the middle of the deck. And he said, with only my super ninja powers, I am going to extract that seven and eight from this deck of cards. Watch carefully. Count to three with me. Here we go. Ready? And one, two, three. He You guys want to know how to do that? My friend Bob Ninja, he showed me how. All right, here's what you do. If you happen to have a deck of cards, go ahead and grab your deck of cards. 
If you don't have a deck of cards, that's okay. Just watch and you'll be able to find out how to do this magic trick and you can do it later. We take the deck of cards. We take out a seven of clubs. And if you'll notice, these little marks right here, these little black marks, those are called clubs. So you're gonna take out a seven of clubs and you're going to find an eight of spades, an eight of spades. These little black marks right there are spades. So now you have an eight of spades and a seven of clubs. Now here's the interesting part. We're also gonna go through the deck and we're gonna take out two more black cards, a seven and an eight that are similar, but different. You may think these are exactly the same, but they're different. Seven of spades, not a seven of clubs. Eight of clubs, not the eight of spades. So now, we have two sets. Make sure you guys can see this. Notice it is a seven of clubs, eight of spades, seven of spades, eight of clubs. They look very similar, but they're very, very different. Here's what we do. Take the deck of cards. Take one of the pair, seven, eight. We put it, bury it in the middle of the deck like my friend Bob Ninja did. We bury it in the middle of the deck. Now here's where the magic comes. We can show the people, the audience members, that we put the seven and eight in the middle of the deck like I did, like my friend Bob Ninja did. Now here's the way to set up the trick. We take our seven of spades, put it on the bottom of the deck. So now we have a seven of spades on the bottom of the deck. Then we take the eight, put it on the top. So now we have the eight on the top and we have the seven on the bottom. Now here is the magic move, watch very carefully. Here's the magic move Bob Ninja showed me. He said, take your Pac-Man hand. Wah, 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 wah. Put your fingers on the top, thumb on the bottom. And remember, we still have the seven on the bottom, eight on the top. And you can either do this in your hand or you can do it on a hard surface. What we do, I'm gonna show you this in slow motion. In slow motion, we go one, two, three, and the cards stick to your fingers. That's seven and eight. Stick to your fingers. And then we can show the seven and eight. Now I'll do this in fast motion so you guys can see. Ready, here we go. So in slow motion, it looked like that. Watch this in fast motion. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. In fast motion, it looks like you pulled it right from the middle of the deck. Isn't that cool? That's a trick you guys can do for your moms and your dads. Give yourself a huge round of applause. Yay! Pat on the back. Ah! All right. Here, and we take our cards and we always put them back in their box. So that way we have them for next time. Perfect. You can put that down. Oh wait, I noticed I still have this ninja hair. All right, well, um, should I, should I do my hair or the hat? Which way, wait, okay, raise your hand if you want me to keep the hair on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> raise your hand if you want me to keep the hat on, put the hat on. No, okay, I'll keep the hair on, all right. <laughs> We're gonna keep the hair on for the rest, because I am now Bob Ninja. <laughs> all right, I told you, I was looking through the telescope, and remember that the meteor came over and bam, and landed, well, I made a mistake. I touched it, I touched the meteor, and it was hot. But I thought maybe, just maybe, I developed anti-gravity powers. So here's what I think I'll do. I think I'll try to levitate this dollar bill. Watch very carefully. Let's fold it once, fold it twice, three, four times. Watch very carefully. We're gonna float this dollar bill. One, two, three. Oh, hmm. didn't work. Well, you know what? I forgot to activate my anti-gravity powers. And, and you guys can help me. Here's what we're gonna do. To activate the anti-gravity powers, you first pull on one ear. 
Boop. Then we pull on the other ear. Boop. And then we pull on both ears and, and eyebrows go up. Boop, boop. <laughs> All right, I have now activated my anti-gravity powers. Watch carefully. Fold it, make sure it's folded right. Go on, go on, buddy. Cool, excellent. Watch carefully. One, two, three. No strings. You guys wanna know how to do that? Well, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this trick. All right, I'm gonna show you the secret right now. Inside the dollar bill is A quarter and that quarter acts as a weight on my thumb and makes it appear like it's floating now I'm going to show you the professional magicians way of doing this <clears throat> and I'm going to show you a few little um, uh, professional tips along the way first take your dollar bill everybody get your dollar bill if you don't have a dollar bill if you don't have your dollar bill get one get one get a dollar bill perfect okay first we have our dollar bill what we're gonna do is if you were to take this dollar bill out of your wallet or out of your pocket and try to fold it right you might mess it up and 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 it would get all folded all funky so what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called pre-fold the dollar bill so that way when we take it out of our pocket and we fold it up it folds exactly perfectly here's what we do go ahead and lay it down on a hard surface in front of you whether it's your desk or a book or whatever it may be turn it over so you're looking at this side. Now you'll notice there are two circles. There's a circle with an eagle, and then there's a circle with a pyramid. What you're gonna do, the first fold, you're going to fold right at the bottom of those circles. So the first fold is gonna go like that. And make sure you make a nice big crease. So that way when you're ready to fold it later, uh, that nice crease will be there. The second fold you're going to do is right at the top of those circles. So you're going to fold it right at the top of those circles and make a nice big crease so that way once again you're ready to fold it. So you have a, a fold on the bottom, fold on the top. Now here come the last folds, very easy. You see there's a little number there. In my case, because I'm using a one dollar bill, there's a one there. But you might be using a five or a 10 or a 20 or a hundred or a thousand or a million dollar bill. If you have a million dollar bill, you can, you can, you can mail it to me. That's John Abrams at night. Never mind. All right. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to fold this right where the number is, right where the number is. We fold it that way. And then we do the exact same thing on the other side. We make sure there's a nice big crease. If you've done it right, it looks like. My friend George just got a haircut. <laughs> all right, now that that is pre-folded, you have all the big, nice creases. I want you to go ahead and unfold it and put your dollar bill down. Now pick up your quarter and take your quarter. And if you don't have a quarter, go get one quick, 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 because it's so cool. Put it on the little mountain of your thumb. Put it on the mountain of your thumb. And I want you to practice moving it forward and back, side to side. Now here's a little magician's trick for you. A lot of kids, when they do this, they'll go side to side like this. But what I want you to do is instead of going side to side like that, is move your body one way and the quarter the opposite way. And it'll appear that the quarter is floating in the air. It'll appear that the dollar is flo floating in the air. All right, you have officially practiced with the quarter. So here's, we're ready to do the trick. We pre-folded our dollar bill. We have our quarter ready. We practice, practice, practice. Here's what you're gonna do. Take your quarter. Put it in the little circle with the, the eagle and hold it with your thumb. So it looks like that. Excellent. Now you can show the dollar bill. Take a look. Yeah, here's the dollar bill. Now we fold the dollar bill on the bottom. Whoop. Fold the dollar bill on the top. Whoop. 
And now we even fold the sides where you pre-folded that so you have all the creases. And now, a lot of kids, what they do is once they have it in this position, they go, oh, look, I'm floating a dollar. Yeah. But we don't want to do that. We want to build up the suspense. So here's how you build up the suspense. We look at it, stare at it. And by the way, uh, whatever you look at, the audience will look at. So if I were to look over there, you would think something's going on over there. If I was to look over there, you'd think something was going on over there. But everything's going on right here. So we stare at the money, and then we build up the suspense by saying one, two, three. Perfect. Remember I taught you about moving it around, move your body one way and the dollar bill the other way, it appears to be floating. Excellent, you move forward, back, and at the very end, Oh, by the way, I like to put my hand around it so that the, oh, the first thing people think is that there are strings. So we put our hand all around it so that way there's no strings attached. And then at the very end, we pretend that it floats away. Boom. Perfect. Now there's a problem with this trick. It's a problem I didn't tell you before, but I'm going to tell you right now. A lot of times when we do this trick, the person that I'm doing this for will say, will say, oh, let me see that dollar. The dollar's gotta be rigged. Well, we can't hand them the dollar because the, the quarter's hidden inside. So I'm gonna show you how to get that quarter out without them seeing. Here's what you do. We're doing the trick and then, and then they say, can I see that dollar? So here's what we do. Take the dollar bill, open it up, unfold it. As you unfold it, watch what happens. Watch what happens. As I unfold it, the quarter will fall right out. It's now in your hand, and now we can give out the dollar bill. All right, I'm gonna do that one more time. Let me get it set up. We put the quarter where the eagle is, fold it up. Boop, boop, boop. Now we're doing the trick, floating it, staring at it, one, two, three, floating it, floating it. Flies away, whoop. And they say, can we see that? And you say, yeah, no problem. Open it up. Quarter falls in your hand, hand them the dollar bill. Quarter's in the hand. Perfect. <laughs> you guys got it? Excellent job. Great job, you guys. Once again, big round of applause and a pat on your back. All right. Excellent. Now, I have a couple more uh, tricks before I show you the Infinity Tube Challenge. And that's the final trick. But this one, I, I, I got a couple of tricks from my... Um, from my magic course. This one is called Monkey Madness. <laughs> I love that video. You guys wanna see that video again? Okay, okay, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. This is a video, this is one of my favorite videos uh, during the show, right, here we go. That much. <laughs> Wouldn't this be an epic place to play hide and seek? It has like like trees and um, a pyramid there. This is the Amazon forest, is what it is. It'd be a great place to play hide and seek. Well, I have a trick for you, and it, well, it's more of a poem, and it's about my three friends. Uh, there's a robot and a couple of monkeys, and here's how that goes. <clears throat> uh, a monkey, actually two monkeys. Where's that robot? Come on, Mr. Robot, come on out, there he is. All right, a robot and some monkeys were playing hide and seek. The robot jumped into the trees. The monkeys did not peek. The monkey shouted, one through 10, ready or not? And then the monkey jumped into the, those trees looking for that bot. This monkey, he looked way up high. <laughs> This monkey, this monkey, he looked way down low. <laughs> the third monkey, oh wait, you guys didn't realize there was a third monkey. Well, with every good story, there's a twist. The third monkey, he looked all around. Where did that robot go? Well, the monkeys, they were very quiet. They did not make a peep, but then they heard 
a funny sound. Beep, bo bop, bo beep. <laughs> he was hiding in there the whole time. <laughs> All right, that is monkey madness. <laughs> I love that. All right, one of the guys took my class. He's he's a guy by the name of Magic Man. He said, "I am Magic Man." Now I don't know if you know this or not, <clears throat> but to get your superpowers. A superhero has to go to a superhero school and they give him a task. And if he can pass that task, pass that test, then he gets his superpowers. Well, they told Magic Man, here's what you're going to have to do, Magic Man. You're going to have to take this piece of paper and these scissors and with one cut, create a star. It is called... Superstar. So Magic Man said, not only am I going to fold this and create a star, but I'm gonna fold it all sorts of different ways and I'm going to create a star ship. So he folded it once. And then he folded it over. And then he folded that side over. And then he folded over the big flap. And he folded it one more time. And he said, look, it's a starship. <clears throat> Okay, that's not a very good starship. But he said, watch this. One cut of his scissors. He created a star. You guys wanna know how to do that one? This is one of my favorite tricks, it's called Superstar. Now, it would take me, I don't know, an hour or so to teach you how to fold the piece of paper and how to cut it and create a star like that with one cut. So here's what I've done. I've created an entire web page that shows all these tricks that I'm showing you today. All these tricks except for Bob Ninja's trick. It doesn't show you that but there's a bonus card trick on that web page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send Miss Kelly that link. And um, well, we'll see if Miss Kelly puts it on the website. Uh, hopefully she will, I think she probably will. All right, so that is called Superstar. I wanna see everybody doing that. Isn't that cool? I love that trick. All right, the last trick. Everybody get out your TV roll, your TV roll. It is time for the grand finale. It is called the Infinity Tube Challenge. All right, the Infinity Tube Challenge. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to take your infinity tube, your magic telescope, your TV roll, whatever you, you choose to call it. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to drop it on a hard surface. Make sure it's a hard surface, either like a book or, um, or your desk or the floor. So make sure it's a hard surface. And we're going to drop it down. And it's going to land just like this. And when it does, we're going to go, yeah! All right, here we go. Uh, when you hear the music, get ready. I'm going to count to three. Get ready. One, two, three, and go, 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 go. Music going. Good, 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 good. Drop, 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 drop. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Stop music, stop music, wait, wait. I forgot to tell you the secret. Here's the secret. The secret is not to drop it like this. The secret is to drop it like that. So if you drop it like that, it's gonna stand up after a few tries. Here we go. On the count of three, I want everybody to, 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 to drop their TV roll. Get ready, get set, and go, 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 go. And, and mine's, mine, mine's like lands flat. <laughs> you know what? I don't think the surface is hard enough. So we're going to do it a little harder surface. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. And then it's Yeah! All right. This is called the Infinity Tube Challenge. Here's what you're going to do. 
Round one, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure you have a hard surface like this, this small book that I have. You make, make sure there's a hard surface there and then you drop it on, that's round one. You're gonna drop it on the hard surface. All right, and oh, by the way, you're gonna challenge your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, uh, any friends, relatives. Say, this is the Infinity Tube Challenge! And you can actually supply them with a teepee roll if you like. So you say on the count of three, we're gonna do the Infinity Tube Challenge. They call it the Infinity Tube because you get an infinite number of tries to do it. When I count to three, here we go, ready, and one, two, three, here we go! And yeah, we're trying, yeah! All right, that's round one. Round one is with a big surface. Round two is gonna be a little smaller, it's a little tougher. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take a book. In fact, uh, this is a library. What is this book? This is this is called the Book of Bizarre Truths. I highly recommend it. I open it up and I can read all sorts of crazy, crazy truths that I can't even believe are true. All right, this is the Book of Crazy Truths. We put it down and notice this surface area is smaller than this, this little teeny book I have. And then, this is round two. We're gonna drop it on here and, and have a contest. Okay, are you ready? Excellent. Let's, when I count to three, we're gonna drop it. Get ready, get set. One, two, three. Here we go, here we go. See if we can stand it up. Everybody, get bounce it, bounce it. And see if you can stand it up. I, oh, I'm not having good luck. Here, come on, come on. Oh, almost, almost I'm a cheat. Yeah! <laughs> all right, round three. Round three is the toughest round of all. Here's what you're gonna do. When you get a chance, gather two decks of cards. Put them down. Now notice the surface area is even smaller. And when I count to three, oh wait, stop that music. When I count to three, you're gonna drop it on there and try to bounce it on there. I could never do this. Uh, well, stop every once in a while, but, but I'm gonna try. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Here we go, here we go. Uh, the Infinity Two Challenge on the, the two decks of cards. I don't know if I can do it. Oh my goodness, goodness gracious. Okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well, thank you everybody for joining me for the WOW workshop. We now know what others want and stick around for a little bit or check the website for the library and we'll be posting hopefully that um, uh, the, the link for the secret web page so you can look it over and I'll be showing you all of these different tricks. You can watch them over and over and over again, backwards, forwards, however you want to do it. Thank you, everybody. Have a terrific, terrific fun time and visit the library very, very soon.